Hello, my name is Tom Tips. I work with Beak Mineral Paints in Fort Mill, South Carolina. Today we are in my home office in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where we will be applying the mineral silicate finishes over the face of this brick. The face of the brick is very textured and pitted, so this is the nature of the surface that we're working with. On this side, I will apply two coats in an opaque finish. On this side, we'll apply two coats in a transparent or glaze finish. We are using Beak Rhinosil for the opaque finish on this side of the tape. On this side of the tape, we're using the Beak Concrete Stone Glaze. We've diluted the concrete stone glaze to give it transparency in a ratio of one part paint to five parts base V dilution. We're going to begin our application with the glaze material. On this side, of course, we have the dips, we have the, the pinholes and the pockets that we need to fill with the material. For that purpose, I'm going to use a six and a half inch by half inch nap roller. This is a woven roller, and we will dress it off using the wiper brush. Okay, I'm ready for our first coat of the concrete stone glaze. I have my roller, and we're gonna just roll this material on pressing hard on the roller to get it to go into the little nooks and crannies, and then wait a couple of minutes for it to dry slightly, and then we'll finish it off with the brush. If you have a thick enough nap on your roller, this is easy. If it's too thin, you can't get the material to go. It won't fill in. There we go. You're going to see that at the end, after I get the material in, we will dress it off, we will roll it off in the same direction. Very gentle. Get some paint there. Very gently, just the pressure of the roller contacting the surface. I'm leaving it off. What this will do is it'll provide us with an even finish to work with our brush. Now, we wait. I'm going to bring the camera around the side. I want you to see in glancing light, the sheen. Obviously the material is wet. If we come back to the brick too soon with our wiper brush, then we move more material around than I want to. I really want to leave enough material peaked on the surface so that all I'm doing is laying it down with the brush. I don't want to remove it. I don't want to displace it. Now, if you take a look, you can see areas where it's drying. These areas are turning, um, that they're dead flat matte. Now it's time for us to brush. Brushing application is simply random. I don't want to present a pattern. I don't want it to look like I worked on a little two foot section at a time. So randomizing the movement allows you to do just that. Now, let's have a look. Get that a little bit closer. We can see now that the brick looks very smooth. We don't have the dimpled effect from the roller. This looks nice and even. We're gonna leave this in this condition and let it completely dry out. The application calls for this first coat to cure at minimum 12 hours so that when we come to it the next day, we won't be able to move this paint around. It will be hardened overnight and then it's safe for us to apply by roller and brush it around without touching the bottom coat. All right, see my paintbrush? I've loaded up with some paint. Now we'll make the application. I'll be working from the bottom up. I just work the paint in using circular motion of the brush. I need more material. I'll grab some from the bucket, kind of stipple it in a little bit as I go along, help fill those pinholes. You'll see that I'm evening the grains up as I go also. Paint dries pretty quick, about eight minutes. That first coat will be dry. 
but it has to cure overnight before we brush it again, just as we did with the glaze. What's unique about these brushes is they are very large. They have a nice thick width to them. They carry a lot of paint. When we're working with mineral paints and we're working with them on coarse surfaces, a brush like this is an absolute advantage to speed. You can get more material applied than you do with a smaller brush. Smaller brush, you're going in and out of the bucket way too often. And as all natural bristle brushes, the bristles will break. Just pick them off as you go. Let them go. All right, we're gonna do something different up here on the top. I'm gonna to apply a smooth coat up here on top because I want you to see the difference in how these divots are filled. It may be a, uh, a finish quality that's desirable, but at least you have an opportunity to see why we use the coarse finish as the first coat when we're trying to fill them. And that looks pretty good. All right, now the upper area, we're going to apply a smooth coat of the Renaissance Fine Mineral Silicate Paint. Immediately you can see the difference in the filling power. I'm not going to attempt to try and fill these because that's not the finish I'm trying to demonstrate. I would like for you to see what just a plain old whitewash that's opaque over the top of this brick would look like so that we can still see the character of the brick and its textural quality. We won't hide that. The hiding power of these mineral silicate paints is tremendous. That's because there's so much titanium dioxide in the paint. It's also because of the mineral basis of the material. It's quartz base. It's not an acrylic or some kind of polymer. All right, I like that. We'll call it. And then just to review, as we allow this material to cure overnight, we have on the left side, our first coat of beak, concrete stone glaze, diluted one to five, one part color, five parts base B dilution. On the right hand side, we have one coat of beak, Renaissance fine on top, and beak Renaissance coarse on the bottom. All right, let's begin. We have our roller. I've loaded it up with some of the diluted stain. And here we go. I'm going to begin by pressing down as I did yesterday to try and fill in all these little depression areas. I want to get that done in one coat. And remember that at the end, after we get the material in and onto the brick the way we like it, we will dress it off in one direction, which is from the top to the bottom. Come it around, I'm pressing this in. When we're using a large, 
a larger project, you're going to use a larger roller, nine inch or even larger, 18 inch. But uh, of course, at this scale, it doesn't make sense to try and make that work. I do have a half inch thick roller sleeve applying the material. And I think that about does it. You can see some areas where I didn't quite get it so well yesterday. We'll get those filled right in. There we go. Get everything looking pretty good. Clean it up. All right. The little divot areas, little pinholes, as best I can. Depending on the texture of your brick, we'll depend, you know, you'll use your own technique. You'll develop that. You'll use it to get a, a really nice and uniform application. Here we go. I'm going to dress it off. You can see that the roller is leaving its mark. All right. I'm going to move the camera over. Got a slight adjustment. I want you to see what I see, and that is in the glancing light, we can see the shine that's apparent on the surface. As it begins to dry, it will look more like our brick right over here to the right. Of course, I have the advantage of being right here. I can see it much better than the camera can. We will wait about two minutes and then we will come to it. So as we're looking at the brick right now, you can see that it's beginning to turn matte. Our timing is now. It's been about three minutes. So here we go. I'm going to dress that off. See, I use just a random wiping motion. Not very difficult. And that is done. That's it. Now, I'm going to remove the camera and walk it around so that you have a sense of how it looks when we get up really close. Notice that the, uh, that the marks from the roller have disappeared. We now see a more even appearance. Remember that the brick is still wet. Once the coating dries, we're going to see much more opacity as it builds up. Some of these other areas, pretty obvious, they're going to be a bit wider, lighter in color, more hiding once this cures out. Okay, we're back. We finished the concrete stone glaze application. The second coat is on. We're now going to apply the second coat to our opaque side. And I see already I've got a brush bristle from yesterday. Bye-bye. There we go. All right. Application goes pretty quick. I like to move quickly when I'm painting because this paint dries in about five to eight minutes, depending on the temperature and humidity, of course, outdoors. Wet them. And that's what I typically do. I wet the brushes and uh, dry them out a little bit so they're not sopping wet. And it softens the bristles and it makes for a really nice application. Try and get some of those little pinholes filled. Prefer to fill those in the first coat because in the second coat, they're a little bit more of a challenge. Okay, let's get up here. Here you will see how the fine material, it's a bit more of a challenge to try and fill those open holes. And I'm trying to retain them because actually I wanted to show that texture and how they look. And 
and you can tell it's a windy day today. Okay, two full coats. What does this represent? Two full coats are required for the 15 year warranty of the paint. For the concrete stone glaze, because it's a thinner material, it has a 10 year warranty. The understanding is, is that the material weathers from the top down. So obviously the thicker the coat, which the paint represents, we get more life out of it. Our typical experience of these materials, the paints, uh, if we're in a coastline environment, lighthouses and such, I expect 20, 25 years um, for the concrete stone glaze, we expect 15, 20 years. Now, we're gonna let this dry. Normally, if we're going to evaluate color, we're going to wait until eight hours pass because during this period of time, the brick has absorbed water, the coating has water in it. We need to allow this to dry out and as it dries, it becomes lighter. It's the opposite of ordinary acrylic paints. So let's give it about eight hours or so. We'll give a final evaluation and uh, there you go. Okay, we have finished our mock-up. Uh, in conclusion, what we see is that we have the opaque finish, two coats of Renaissance fine on top, base coat Renaissance coarse on the bottom with a top coat of Renaissance fine. Extremely opaque, it's what it should be. We can see the filling capacity of the grain, coarse grain material. And then how the Renaissance being a thin material nevertheless, Undiluted, in its thickest possible state, it still mimics the brick. Nice. The original color of our brick, very orangey looking, very rust looking uh, uh, color. And then the glaze side. Now on the glaze side, I want to point out, we've applied two coats, one to five. We diluted the concrete stone glaze, which is the color with the base V, this is the dilution. The base B is diluted one to one with water, so it is a concentrate. If we have one gallon of this, it makes two gallons. And what I wanna point out here is that it's very possible to change the opacity of these coats. In one to five, two coats, we see what we get. If we were looking for more hiding power, we might consider one to four or one to three and two coats. Therefore, we have more pigment in the mixture and more hiding power. So it depends on what kind of uh, decorative finish that you're looking for. We can do that. Uh, once again, we can see the, the areas where it took more pigment were those that were more absorbent. The surfaces that were very smooth took less. And by brushing with the wiper brush, we were able to control the mark of the roller. So it does not look painted. It looks natural like the brick should. I'm gonna take the camera off next. I'm going to just kind of do a survey of the surface so you can get a sense of it up close. And uh, that will conclude our video. What a contrast. Areas where it were more absorbent, areas are less absorbent. Where we have darker pigment, like here, it still comes through. So what we've done is just by using white, which is there's no particular reason we could have used any color, but what we've done is we've been able to um, blend this in a way that is desired. Here we're looking for a whitewash. If we were looking for a color shift because it was just too much difference between the strong rust color and the paler, uh, slightly yellow, you know, red yellow finish uh, of the brick here, we can choose a color that's in between the two and help blend these together. So they're, they're less, we would say to harmonize them better. Over on the uh, opaque side, once again, the pinholes are still coming through. You could see when I was brushing it in, the heavier the paint on the brush, the easier it is to kind of fill those in, but it's time consuming. If we want to hide this, always use the coarse material. It's just better that way. And, 
When we look at the course material from a side view, we can see that the corners and such are all rounded. They're not so sharp. That's what the coarse material does. It helps blend these things together. Here, we see a sharper contrast because the paint coating is not really changing the structure of the brick face. And of course, at the glaze, it's totally unchanged. The structure remains. Thank you all very much.